Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I just want to talk about the year of 2023 and No Man's Sky and what Hello Games has delivered into the verse. So, yes, it's the year that it was their seventh anniversary, people inside of the viewerverse. Behind me right now is their seventh anniversary trailer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit up each and every one of their trailers, have it playing behind me for each of the different updates that they've done this year, and talk about what each of those updates have brought into the iteration so far. When I say the so far, the year hasn't ended just yet. It kind of feels like we may have run the full course of updates this year of course i could be wrong something could happen in between now and christmas that completely throws this review out of the window and i might have to do another one but you know what bit of a dry spell don't mind if that happens <laughs> so this is how i feel about 2023 so far people and we've had so many updates to date from the day of launch until now and we've seen all sorts of wondrous stuff come into the verse but we're only focused on the year of 2023 and exactly what that delivered in. So let's get on with it, shall we, people? Because we started off the year with, I believe, was it the uh, Fractal update? Let me just refresh my memory and I'll be right back. Okay, chums, yes, the first update of the year was the Fractal update. Now, they dropped a snowflake for this, and every single snowflake is individual and unique. I honestly thought it was going to deliver in something that was to do with procedural generation, but that wasn't the case, people. No, we got the Utopia Expedition alongside this, which delivered in the Utopia Speeder, which was probably the biggest and bestest element of this update. However, it did introduce the Wonders Catalogue, and now we've got the Wonders Projectors later in the year. The Wonders Catalogue is quite a welcome addition. Addition. It also gave us a few more UI tweaks. It gave us the ability to have a shield on our left arm rather than our right arm or something. Left-handed mode was thrown into the game. A few other UI improvements, planetary records, and a few other bits and bobs that would just be quality of life. It was a small start to the year, but it was a start nonetheless. Heck yes. And next up, was the Interceptor update. Now, the Interceptor update brought in these dissonant systems, along with them corrupted Sentinels. It also gave us a lovely Sentinel jetpack and evolved the story a little bit more. I think this was part one of the ARG that Sean alluded to. And it also brought in Echo Camps, or Lost Camp Sites, that you could bring into iteration. Not only that, it brought in the new Sentinel ship type, which is probably one of the most modular, coolest ships that we have in game to date. Hercules. There's a lot of people that just devote their time looking for Crash Sentinel ships and sharing them in the verse. It also brought in a few more different combat mechanics, including the ability to blow up giant freighters in space. I mean, it was just Sentinel freighters at first, Sentinel sort of ships, or the big sort of uh, freighters. But now we can blow up any freighter in space unless it's tied to a mission from the pirate systems, which is a little bit weird, but hopefully they tweak that. But yes, improved combat all round, including new enemies on planet surfaces, and some of them even having the ability to stealth, like these spider tanks, which is pretty darn freaking gnarly and cool. And yeah, I quite welcome this as a bit of a challenge. And because some of this sort of stuff you need to be quite OP, really, to actually take on all those Sentinels. It almost felt like it was leaning towards end game content, which is great for legacy players. So it's definitely a step in the right direction for the year and definitely added a much needed challenge in as well as more varied combat. I quite welcome that one. Interceptors, great update. Now in 2022, we saw it come to the Switch. In 2023, we saw it come to the Apple Mac. I guess we did. So yeah, the whole game over to Apple Mac, including multiplayer, including everything pretty much, unlike the Switch version, which is a little bit cross cut down. But yeah, cross play, cross save, and it also gets the Steam updates. Very cool for Mac users, a big year for Mac users this, because now they've got the full game. I guess if you're a Mac user, this is probably the best year for you. <laughs> Okay, so next up was the Singularity Expedition. Now, in the previous update, we could find the Echo Camps. However, we couldn't bring them in sort of willy-nilly using Echo Locators or anything like that. But now when we visited these Echo Camps, we got a little bit of lore, and we actually managed to build our own autophage up inside of the old Nexus. But we hadn't seen the new race. 
as yet. I mean, that comes a little bit later in the year. But we did come across these life rafts, which gave us quite a lot of sort of ARG clues. This was part two of the ARG. You can see there was spawning in these crystalline sort of entities and getting Atlantium. And there was mentions of Void Mother inside of this expedition. Now, this expedition, because it had lore tied to it, was one of my favourite expeditions to date. And by the end of it, you could build your own sort of avatar that looks like an auto page with one or two different heads either the Atlantid or the Crimson Head, which was pretty darn freaking gnarly. It kind of hints that maybe we might be moving to some sort of faction sort of setup, or at least that's where a lot of speculation went, at least mine, and, uh, and many others to be fair. But yeah, awesome expedition. This expedition, as far as expeditions goes, left something into game afterwards, it hinted at something else to come, it put in a load of lore, and it was a brilliant expedition. Thoroughly enjoyed that expedition, the best expedition for a long time. Okay, so people, the last part or the last sort of update that we've had so far is Echoes. Now, Echoes let you also bring in the actual camps whenever you wish, also gave you the ability to pick up and build your own staff, and we got to meet autophages out in the wilds at their camps and build on the narrative and lore around the Void Mother coming into iteration. So now we have the autophages out there in the verse. We've also encountered giant pirate dreadnoughts where you can fly down the channels of them, take out their shields and blow out these massive dreadnoughts. The space combat again has had another sort of variant added to it. So we've got a lot more combat into game, a lot more mechanics going in there and a lot more lore hinting towards this Void Mother. What we haven't seen actualized or materialized into the verse is the Realm of Glass or the Void or the Void Mother herself if she is an entity. It's quite hard at this stage to understand exactly what's going on. We haven't got all the pieces to the puzzle. So I was hoping to see the ARG fully com completed this year and see part four come into iteration. Wasn't to be, but if we're just judging it on what we've got, I really enjoyed the Echo's content and what it delivered into game and the, the staffs honestly thought it would take a lot longer to get through all of that content but to be honest I've built my staff and I'm quite happy with it now people so let's just do a little synopsis of the full year shall we people okay then so if I jump on over onto my other screen here we go Chikpa! boom I put this together in Photoshop so all I've done is cut up all the updates and just laid them out like this so you can see exactly what took place so we had the Utopia Speeder and Utopia Expedition inside of the fractals update the fractals update didn't, didn't deliver too much if i had to rate the fractal update in ways and means of what it brought into the verse i'd probably give it probably around about a five out of ten it was quite middle range mediocre didn't really deliver too much and then we had No Man's Sky Interceptor update, which was pretty darn freaking snazzy and cool. Introduced a whole new Sentinel type, and I loved it. I thought that was freaking awesome. I, I would give that one a freaking 9. A 9 out of 10 for Interceptor. It was great, and it furthered the actual lore and the whole narrative of No Man's Sky. And si similarly, Singularity. Singularity was brilliant too, because it added to that. And also Echoes. So all three of these went really well together. These three just sort of slotted in, meshed in, brilliant. Overall, the three of them together, I'll give them a nine. I mean, some of them aren't quite there. Some of them be like an eight. Uh, well, one of them is probably about an eight. But yeah, when they all come together, I'm giving this a nine overall there. Expedition 11, though, was freaking pants. It was my worst expedition to date, people. Um, I would give that probably a freaking four because it was below average and it was tedious and it was horrible and nothing actually made sense. The fact that it came to Mac this year was pretty darn freaking awesome as well for the community because we've got more people come and join us inside of the No Man's Sky verse. Overall, I'll say 2023 was a really good year. It had two things to it that I feel let it down slightly, the Fractal update and also the Expedition 11. So when you sort of put in a medium, especially since you've got nine in the middle there, and then you've got something that's mediocre either side, I think it would be fair to give this perhaps maybe an eight overall for this year. And I think it's only just scraped in at an eight. I would say a 7.8, to be honest, a 7.8. So it's a very close to a full rounded eight. But not quite. Not quite, but we've, we've still got the rest of the year to go. Let's see what happens to this year and see if it pushes that 7.8 up a notch, hey, people inside the viewer verse. But to be honest, I think a 7.8 for this year is quite good. I would say there's been bigger and better years, but 
It's not been bad, has it? Anyway, let us know in the actual comments if you think I've been fair with this rating or given it an, a 7.8 out of 10. Okay, people, thanking you for watching. Until next time, salute to Monday. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.